guys, welcome to Three Questions, episode 16, I think. We'll check that. Um, but my special guest today is Paul Martini. Hey, man, welcome. Hey, David. So good to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Great, great. As you can see over my shoulder, Paul has a brand new book out called Access and Release God's Peace. And I was really excited to get this book. Um, Scotty, actually a mutual friend of ours, Scotty told, told or gave some uh, heads up about how good the book would be. And then I don't know if people got their hands on the pre-release or what, but everyone's like, you've got to read this book. And so for me, especially for my wife, she's been really diving into like what peace meant in Hebrew and the authority it carried. And I know you dive into some of that in the book. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, what you do, who you are, things like that. Yeah, uh, so um, I am uh, cr currently I work for Global Awakening. Uh, I'm an associate evangelist for them, and um, I travel around the world uh, equipping you know the saints for the work of ministry. It's kind of like the call of my life. And um, Randy Clark, Dr. Randy Clark, personally mentored me and trained me. I traveled with him for four years after ministry school. Um, got my degree in Bible. Uh, I have one more class, almost done my master's. A theology and um and now i'm uh, i'm also married to a beautiful woman named ruth and um i have six children uh wow <laughs> have, uh, wow, wow. twins and, and and you'll hear the story in my book but i have twins who are uh 15 years old giovanni and juliana who are just amazing uh kids they're so proud of them and uh w with ruth and i we have four children uh, we've been married six years. We have a four-year-old. We have a, a girl turning three. Uh, her name's, uh, my four-year-old's name's Shiloh. My uh, three-year-old's name's Freya. Uh, I have a boy's turning two in October. His name's Oscar. And then I have a little girl named Charlotte. We call her Charlie, and she was born in June. So we have been busy, but we are, <laughs> we are now done. We are complete. I told her I feel like our family has been completed, and so... Uh, I had a full head of hair when I started and it's <laughs> gone. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, so early on in Access and Release God's Peace, you begin to talk about how like peace drives out chaos. And so for me and my wife, Alicia, that like as soon as I read that, I really, my heart started burning because we're really passionate about kingdom family. And they probably heard Leif um, speak about that some. And obviously we get it from him. He's our papa. But... So when I see family, it makes me think of Ephesians where the church is revealed in heavenly places and it drives out the powers of chaos yeah. and different things like that. And so that really started speaking my language. How, how do you feel that family, actually the, those who carry family, or I'm sorry, carry peace, how can peace subdue chaos? Yeah, so I think um, our understanding of peace has been uh, radically perversed um, throughout not just the world but even in the church you know we've equated what peace was to maybe what we would consider peace would be in a worldly context which would be no conflict which would be everything's calm everything is still and everything's at peace and so those are all kind of synonyms in our in our uh, in our mindset and uh, the reality is it's not really God's peace that's God's peace and the world's peace are two totally radically different things Peace is the absence of conflict in the world. That's what peace is. You know, um, peace treaties are an agreement to have no conflict. Um, but that's not what peace would be considered in the kingdom of heaven. Um, mm. The kingdom of God transcends and overcomes chaos. It doesn't uh, try. So that, that's why there's a difference between peacemakers and peacekeepers. And I talk about that in my book. Um, you know, peace, uh, peacemakers, uh, uh, peacekeepers are full of anxiety. Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to appease both sides, walking on eggshells, hoping that what they're doing, spinning all these plates, would keep everyone at peace um, with, with this an absence of conflict in a worldly context, where as peacemakers, they create order, they bring the kingdom, they drive out chaos, and, so, and, they, and they speak truth. And so um, in a Hebrew context, I talk about what the meaning of peace is. Um, and, and I don't know if it's okay to kind of dive into that right now, or if, if you want to, is that all right? Cool. Dive so, in, man. 
I don't want to get preachy and I, I'll try not to. You, you slow me down if I, if I do, but. Hey man, we're making, we're making space for you. So do whatever's on your heart. Thanks, David. So, um, yeah, so, all right. So, uh, let's, let's just talk about words in general. Um, in any language, words develop and change over time. Um, yeah. you know, I talk about how in my book, um, the word wicked in New England, if you go to New England, if you say wicked, that actually means good. It, it actually, you know, they'll say, hey, that's wicked good, or that's, you know, and they, why? Because the word, even though it means the original context of the meaning is evil, um, mm -hmm. they've developed it and changed it to mean something good, which I don't agree with, you know, to this day. Yeah, but, yeah it's kind of weird. Right, it's so weird. So they would say yeah. wicked's good. Um, but even in, you know, so the etymology of a word, the beginning, the, or, the origin of a word changes over time as society develops and changes and uses it in different contexts. Um, like here's another English word that we use, um, the word awful. The word awful used to mean to inspire unto all. Like I could go and say, David, that shirt you're wearing, it's purely awful. I just, <laughs> it's so awful. You know, and I would, and, and back in the original meaning of that word, I'd be like, oh, that, that shirt's awesome. You know, yeah, yeah. But, but today, if I said that shirt's awful, it would mean it's horrible, it's terrible. Well, even in the Hebrew language, words change over time, and uh, uh, the word peace has evolved to be something much fuller, much more meaningful. Total peace inside, outside, total wholeness. It's it's a wonderful word, and they could write hundreds of books, and I think they have written hundreds of books on the shalom of God. But the um, the original ancient Hebrew, if we go to the etymology of the word, what did it originally mean in the beginnings of the word shalom? We can take a look at it. And so here, here's the, in ancient Hebrew, the word shalom was made of four different letters. It still is. Um, and in ancient Hebrew, um, the first letter um, is pictures. Each of the letters are pictures because in the English language, we're phonetic. We, you know, we use the alphabet, we use sound. Um, yeah. Hebrew, they, the, 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 the letters are also pictures. And so even in and of themselves, they have different meanings. So the letter, um, uh, the first letter of the, of the uh, word shalom is, a, it looks like jagged teeth and, uh, and like a jagged W and it, and it symbolizes teeth and it means to destroy. The wow. second, the second letter is, uh, or picture is a shepherd's hook and it, it means the thought. Um, the third letter is like an attaching letter. It's a nail, and it looks like, and, it, and it's an attaching letter. It means to attach. And the uh, the fourth letter is actually a, a bunch of waves. It looks like this, like a bunch of waves with a underneath, and it means wow. chaos. And so when you originally would say shalom in ancient Hebrew or say peace, you were literally saying to destroy the authority attached to chaos. And so wow. um, when we pray for people and we say, oh, God, you know, we pray that your peace would overcome, that your peace would come upon them. We're actually not asking for them to accept their situation. We're not asking them to be still. We're not asking for them to be at rest. We're really asking that God would destroy the authority attached to chaos in their life because that is pure peace. Because peace is powerful. It's not the absence of conflict. It's the fullness of his wow. kingdom. And so... This really speaks to me because, um, like I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, one of our big things is kingdom family. And if you look at like the, before the beginning, you had father loving son, son loving spirit, spirit loving father. And if you look at creation, you have father loving son, son loving bride, bride loving spirit, spirit loving father. And then anything that happens outside of family is outside of God's original design, which for me is cosmos, divinely intended order. And so, like, what did the enemy do when he was tending Adam and Eve in the garden? Was he being an evil meanie pants? Or was he trying to break apart family and then re recreate family in his own image, which is the order of chaos? Right. And so I had this idea of, okay, wherever family shows up, it drives out chaos. But I was missing a piece, and which is why when I started reading this, I got really excited. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Peace is what the family carries. That, that actually drives the chaos out. So how does cosmos, which is the opposite of chaos, affect its authority? I think it's through everything that you're saying, especially going into the etymology of it, is it's the peace that overcomes and subdues the um, chaos. Right, yeah. And that's, and that's the whole thing. Um, 
Uh, and so I, I think um, the reality is, is that when we emphasize and we understand the totality of peace and how we um, can carry it, um, it's transforming. Uh, peace, we used to think, is peripheral to the, to the mm. gospel message. But the reality is it's central to the gospel message. You have the God of peace, sends the Prince of Peace, who gives us the gospel of peace. This is, you know, Apostle Paul says, kingdom of heaven is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. These are, these are tenets of our Christian faith. And, and the, major, the fact is the majority of Christians in families don't carry peace. They don't even know mm. how to. And uh, yeah. because of that, it's really fractured a lot of things. And I believe that, and this is my opinion, I talk about it in the book, but, but this is, uh, I, from everything I've read in context, peace is the conduit that the power of God loves to flow through. Wow. When yeah. you have peace in your life, his power flows easily. And, it's, um, and mm -hmm. I think we need to get out of the mindset that peace is something to receive, to, to create, you know, uh, because that's why we think it's fragile. We'll say, well, we need, you know, the world will say, empty yourself, you know, empty your mind, clear your head, you know, get quiet, um, go away somewhere. Um, that, first of all, isn't reality, you know, because once you're done, you're full of and inundated with things that will try to, and that's what we thought peace was as Christians. Yeah. Um, but that, that's not real peace. So it's not the emptying of yourself. It's really the filling of him. Um, and yeah. it's not something to create. It's actually something to receive. And that's why Jesus said in John 14, 27, to the disciples who all are going to be martyred except for one, he said, my peace I give to you. My hmm. peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. So do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This, this peace is actually a transference of anointing that we need to learn to carry and to receive. So that when chaos comes or when we're confronted with conflict, we have the decision to say, you know what? I'm going to allow his peace to remain and I'm going to... And I'm going to drive out chaos with it. Mm. That, that, so, that's that's amazing. You actually, you might be prophetic, I guess, since you went ahead and answered my other two questions. <laughs> well, <I'm> just, um, <laughs> uh, so one of the things you also mentioned in the book, and this is kind of tying into something we mentioned a second ago, was how Jesus restored peace that was originally... Um, like, how do you feel peace was exchanged in the garden? I know I gave my thoughts on it, but because you know, they, they were created in peace, they were created in rest. Right. And then the command was to subdue the earth. So the peace they were created in was supposed to circumnavigate the globe and then, who knows, fly out to the rest of the universe. Um, what are your thoughts on just like Jesus, the garden, and peace being connected to maybe the sons of God being revealed? I know you kind of touched on that a little bit, but like any other angles you'd want to hit? Um, I would just say, I, I think, you know, obviously the covenant we have is really the covenant of peace, which is the restoration uh, of what, you know, what Jesus has given us is a, is a peace covenant now that's restored us back to the original intention of what, of how God really intended for us. So I haven't really um, studied that angle. I think, David, you got some amazing revelation there that I'm like, now I'm like uh, itching at the bit to kind of go and look up and, and, and uh, <laughs> go into, but um, that's a, that's actually an amazing aspect of it. Um, I kind of, in the book talked about how Jesus is our peace covenant. And, uh, um, and that's, that's why this is so central to the gospel message. If you miss this angle. Um, and that's why I also talk about, you know, the enemy's not really worried about your anointing. I love anointing. I love presence. He's not worried about your spiritual gifts, even though those are dangerous to, to you know, that's not really what concerns him. I think what he, he tries to do most is steal people of peace. Because when wow. you don't have peace, you become ineffective for the kingdom of heaven. He doesn't need to burn down every church in America, David. He just needs to make sure the people inside don't have peace. Wow. wow. That's, the mission. that's the mission. So that's why you have ministers who can walk in gifts of healing and gifts of, and do amazing things. And they're lacking something so essential, like an essential vitamin to their body that they fall into these horrible traps. Why? Wow. Because if he can get their peace out of them and have them start itching for something else, it doesn't matter what anointing they carry, it's gonna, they're going to burn. So yeah. um, it's, we, we're starting off on the wrong foot. We're, you know, we're, we need to emphasize this again. And I, and I think God has emphasized his peace in the past and he's just reemphasizing it, you know, just, um, and I think, 
um, you know, I get a lot of times like, why, and I talk about this in the book too, is, you know, well, I ask God for peace. I ask God for, you know, I've, I talk to people who really are having a lot of trauma, torment in their life, or maybe a lot of uh, difficulty, anxiety. And, um, and they say, well, you know, uh, how do I how do I receive this peace? And so I, I believe it is a transference of anointing. I could, it could either be sovereign or through the laying on of hands. But I also believe that people think of peace like they're they're ordering through a drive-through restaurant. Wow. Where they're going to just you know get it out of a window. Look, I grew up. I'm an Italian American. I grew up in an Italian <laughs> family. They loved cooking. A lot of other cultures very similar. And my house. My, my parents would do like cooking meatballs and uh, cooking all types of different sauces and things like that. And it, when I was in the middle, when I was in middle school, I remember my friends, they, they come up and they ask me and they say, Paul, do your parents own a hoagie shop? Do they own like some sort of sandwich or something? I said, no, why? They said, because you literally smell like, a, like they weren't like saying that I stink as much as like I smell like food. And I realized something, all my clothes were permeated with the essence of everything my parent was, parents were cooking. Why? Wow. Because I lived there. Mm. So I think we need to take a different approach to peace isn't something that we order from the Lord, like petition, like I'll have one order of peace in one order of um, love, in one order. The, the reality is, is when you stay abiding in his presence to the point that he's, he's not just, you're not ordering it, it's like him, he's coming upon you, wow. resting upon you, that, that it actually is just a part of your essence, that when you leave, people are like, man, what is on you? you wow. You know, you know I, I always say this is, this is why Italians wear a lot of cologne. <laughs> true because from that day on you know i couldn't control what my parents made but i was like Pfft. yeah you know Straight because i don't feel like a hoagie but uh <laughs> so it's a little gross but anyway it's it's the truth and so yeah man i just think i think a lot of people they don't know where to start you know and they just they their intentions are good they want peace but they need to realize um that it's something that's available for them. It's something that God can give them, but something that they got to um, go to receive it. It's not, it's not like ordering from the drive through window when, when yeah, there's trouble. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. I think that's good. And that was actually, since you already answered the question, my third question was how do you activate peace and see that just released in people? Man, I feel like we could just sit here all day. And again, for me, it was huge. Like, that's why I'm like, I was, I was eager to share with you. Um, because I felt like for what me and Lisa carry and really desire to release, peace was the missing piece. Right. And um, not that we weren't carrying peace, but like sometimes you miss the majesty of something, like you said, because the words overlooked. Right. One day Leif looked at me and he said, you're more than a revivalist. And I was like, what, what, what? And then that's when we learned to be son, become a son and a daughter and then a mother and a father. And, um, and so, and then when I started to talk about kingdom family, I realized, wait, this is more than like having a kid's ministry and a youth ministry. Like, what is the family? What's the secret of that? And so now at peace, it's like another tier up. It's like, okay, the family lives in peace yeah. and it's a peace that's dangerous to chaos. And like you said, it's like, you know, like the devil doesn't necessarily want to knock you over, but I, I feel like chaos comes up and wants to hit, beat you in the shins with a club to steal your peace and your joy. And then all of a sudden you're focused on getting healing in the area when you should be thriving in the area. Right. So yeah, man. Um, thanks for coming on the show today. How can people find this book and connect with you? Uh, Facebook, YouTube, uh, where can they get the books? I know you're on global awakening, all that stuff. Yeah. So uh, you can go to um, uh, amazon.com and get this on Kindle. You can, uh, uh, you can get it uh, mail order. You can go to globalawakening.com. We have a bookstore that carries the book. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, uh, Martini5050. I don't know why I picked that, but it was <laughs> you know, whatever, 5050. Yeah. And then uh, also uh, just Paul Martini on Facebook. And um, uh, I've also, if you go to globalawakening.com, um, you can look up my bio. Uh, I'm one of their evangelist speakers. So they uh, minister. So they have, they have a listing for me and they have 
video clips and stuff if you want to learn more. But David, it was such a great, great time being on here with you. I feel like I could talk to you for three hours. High honor again. Thanks for coming on the show today. Make sure to go pick up Access and Release God's Peace at your local bookstore or on Amazon.com. All the links will be below. No. All right, man. Peace, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Peace out, bro. Peace out. Oh, 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 oh,